Hello everyone. Welcome to session 4 of module 1, Fundamental Test Process. In this session, I'll explain you about the fundamental test process. So fundamental test process starts through the test planning and continues till the test closure. So the test process is not a single activity. It starts, it has several stages and starts with planning and finishes with test closure activities. Then test planning should consider the time spent on planning and test closure activities. So whenever you are doing test planning, you should always consider the time that you are spending on planning as well as any time spent in test closure activities like preparing test, test um, summary reports or um, defect status report. So all the time that you spend in all in, in the closure activities or in the planning, uh, you need to consider that um, in, in your test planning. Then project and test plans should include time spent on test planning, test designing, preparing for execution and evaluating status. So it's not only like test plan should consider the time spent on test planning, designing and preparing for execution. Your project plan should also include all this time that you uh, spend on different planning activities, uh, be it the estimation activities or planning meetings that you do before you, you start your um, test uh, preparation or if you are doing a test designing activities or whatever time you are spending on test designing, whatever time you are preparing to figure out or set up the test environment um, before you start the execution, um, all that time needs to be included in your project plan and test plans. Then the idea of fundamental test process for all levels of test has developed over years. So it's it's not something which came just now. It's, it, it, it has been, you know, um, developed over years and has been used over years. Whatever the level of testing, we see the same type of main test activities happening. There may be a different amount of formality at different levels, but the test process or the activities, test activities in each test level will be kind of similar. For example, if you're doing unit tests, they might be carried out less formally as compared to uh, functional testing or system testing. So let's go ahead and see what are the basic steps in fundamental test process. So fundamental test process consists of five steps. Five steps are the first step is planning and control. The second is analysis and design. Third step is implementation and execution. Then you do evaluate exit criteria and do test reporting activities. And finally, test closure activities. So these are the five steps, fundamental um, test process steps in any um, test process. So you plan, uh, you plan for testing, you analyze and design your test cases, then you implement the test cases and do execution. While execution, when, once you are doing execution, you evaluate the exit criteria, whether, whether um, you are fulfilling the exit criteria and then you report, uh, do reporting activities. And then finally, when all the testing has been finished, you do test closure activities or test, test um, um, final test reports. So these are the fundamental um, steps in the test process. So let's go ahead and look at these steps one by one. So first is test planning and control. So during test planning, what you do is you understand the goals and objectives of the customer, stakeholders and the project. Then you understand the risks 
which testing is intended to address. And then you set the goals and objectives for testing based on goals and objectives of customers, stakeholders, and project. So let's elaborate these points a little bit. So during planning, the first thing that you do is you understand what you want, what the goal of testing is, what the objective is, um, what the objective of the customer or stakeholder is. What is the objective or the goal of the project that is being developed? What, what is the final goal of that project? Who will be the end users? What the stakeholders of that project want to achieve from that project? So the first thing is to understand the goals and objectives of your customer or the stakeholder who is developing, who wants to develop any solution or any um, software uh, which you will be testing. Then after that, you understand the risks which testing is intended to address. So testing is will be addressing some risks. So any software or any uh, software implementation that is done. So the testing, the main focus of testing is to reduce um, the risks or and gain confidence in the software. So the second thing that you do is you understand the risks which your which the testing that you will do will address for that project and then you set goals and objectives for testing based on the goals and objectives of your customer or stakeholder of the project so the goals and objectives of testing should be aligned with goals and objectives of the customer or stakeholders who are who are kind of main um, who, who want to develop the software uh, uh, who want to address some problem by that software because if the goal and objectives of testing are different not aligned not aligned with the goals and objectives of the customers and stakeholders it doesn't make sense to do that testing because you are not uh, finally you are not addressing the risks if your goals and objectives are not aligned with the goals and objectives of the stakeholders the major tasks in test planning are so you identify the objectives of testing based on the scope and risks of the project. So what are the major tasks of test planning? You decide which components, systems or other products are in the test scope. So in test planning, the first thing is, uh, the first task is what is in scope of your testing? You, you want to figure out, you won't be testing everything that is um, that is related to the software. So based on, there are a lot many factors that drive what you will decide which component or which system you will, you will be testing, which will be in scope of testing and what will be out of scope of testing. So there are many factors like risks, timeline, um, any sort of integration with with third party software so there are many factors which need to be considered when you are doing test planning and you decide which components will be in the test scope so this is the first major task of test planning then you decide the business product project and technical risks which need to be addressed so the first thing is you decide what is in scope of the testing what you will be testing in in the test cycle that that you are planning then the second thing is you decide what are the risks which needs to be addressed for that test scope for whatever testing you are you are trying to do and then decide the objective of the testing then finally you need to decide what will be the objective of the testing 
So objective can be like to uncover defects, then to verify that the software meets the requirements and to demonstrate if software is fit for use. So these are pretty common objectives of the testing. Every, every testing that you do, every kind of testing that you will be doing, these are the kind of objectives, basic objectives that will be there. So you'll be finding defects, you'll be verifying whether the requirements are being met by the software and the software is fit for use. So these are the major tasks um, in the test planning. Then what are the other tasks in test planning? Determine the test approach. So how testing will be carried out? What test techniques will be used? What needs to be tested and what extent of test coverage is required? Who is involved and when? Decide test deliverables to, to be produced. So you are, the second step is to determine the test approach. So test approach is nothing but how you will be doing testing, who will be doing what, what test techniques you will be used, when testing will start and who will do all, all uh, who will do different kind of testing. So all these questions you need to determine. So the second task of test planning is to determine the test approach um, and then decide test deliverables. So what you what test deliverables need to be produced like test cases, test data, summary reports. So all these things need to be determined um, in the test approach. Then the third task is to implement the test policy or test strategy. So if the organization test policy and strategy exists, then during planning ensure that testing adheres to these policy or strategy. So the third, the, the second step is to determine the test approach and the third step is to implement the test policy or the strategy the strategy what strategy you will acquire to do the testing to do the actual testing so in case there is um, the high level test strategy all already available in for in the organization you need to ensure that the testing strategy that you are writing is in line with the test strategy or organizational test strategy. Then the fourth step is to determine the required test resources. So it's not only like you'll be you'll be determining uh, the test approach and writing the test strategy. You need to determine the resources, uh, the the test resources required, like the uh, testers. Uh, the hardware and software resources so you need to also finalize these things in the test planning stage so like define the required resources for testing like testers hardware and software okay. then schedule test analysis and design tasks test implementation execution and evaluation so after determining the test resources you need to schedule um, uh, test analysis and design tasks. When will the test analysis and design begin? When will test implementation start? When will test execution and evaluation happen? You need to also schedule those um, tasks. You need to prepare the schedule for all the tasks so, so that tracking can be done and progress is captured. So a proper schedule um, a timeline has to be defined for all the testing activities so that you can do a tracking based on the schedule and you can progress, you can capture the progress of what has been done, what progress has been achieved in different phases of testing. Then you need to determine the exit criteria. 
So after scheduling the test analysis and design task, you need to determine the exit criteria for the testing. So criteria set to find out when to finish testing um, the task that must be completed for the test level before we can exit the test phase. So exit criteria is nothing but a criteria set to find out when you will stop the testing, when you will say the testing is finished. It can be something like no CEV1 and CEV2 or severity 1 or severity 2 defects need to be open. All severity 1 and severity 2 defects need to be fixed and verified by the testers. So a simple criteria can be as, as simple as, as that, like no CEV1 and CEV2 defects need to be remaining in order to exit the test, uh, the testing. So this criteria has to be defined in your test planning itself that no CEV1 and CEV2 defects are open. And then another criteria can be um, all UI related um, all UI related uh, defects no matter what severity um, uh, for the defects is need to be fixed so these are these are the kind of um, criteria that you set in your test planning and once and while your test execution is going on you match uh, the actual progress actual test progress with the exit criteria set in your plan and if uh, the exit criteria is met, then you exit the test phase. Otherwise, you keep on um, doing the changes, fixing the defects, verifying and unless and until exit criteria is, uh, is, is completed or is um, met, you do not exit the test phase. So this exit criteria, determination of exit criteria is also done in test planning phase.